Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our second live lesson of Climate Action Week 2024. My name is Josh and I had the pleasure of working with lots of you yesterday. And that's where I want to begin. I would love it if you could let your teachers know and then your teachers can type in the chat. Can you tell us one thing that you learned from yesterday's live lesson? can see some answers starting to come in. Um, the first one talking about that we do actually need greenhouse gases. Yeah, so we do need them to help our planet stay at a fairly stable temperature, but it's the amount of them. We've got too much of them in our atmosphere that's driving our current climate change. Um, another group said ideas for how to make the world a better place yes we had a author cindy ford with us yesterday who gave us loads of great suggestions of what we can do to make our world a better place um and we also learned more about different types of greenhouse gases and also another class said what climate change actually is thank you so much for sharing those answers just like we did uh, yesterday, um, we're going to do a few little quiz questions to test your knowledge on some climate change concepts. And hopefully this knowledge will help you in today's lesson. So just like before, I'm asking you to put your hands up or on your head to answer. And then just like before, your teachers can type your answers in the chat. But our first question is, what does sustainable mean? Put two hands up if you think it means only buying items that are labelled as sustainable. Put one hand up if you think it means only making and using things made from natural materials. And put your hands on your head if you think it means using resources to meet our needs today and protect them for future generations which one do we think it is getting lots of hand um, of answers coming in Yes, and most of you are saying hands on heads. Yes, and that's what I would agree with as well. You can have different definitions of sustainability and it can mean different things to different people. But I think one common thing which lots of definitions have is this, is that we're using resources to meet our needs today and then also protecting them for our future generations as well. Thank you so much for sharing those answers. OK, next question. What is a carbon footprint? Two hands up if you think it is all the greenhouse gas emissions or release from the activities of a person, company or community. One hand up if you think it is all the carbon dioxide released from the activities of a person, company or community. And then hands on your head if you think it is all the things someone chooses to do to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. What do we think?
Thank you very much for all of those answers coming in. I can see a I can see a trend that splits between two hands up and one hand up. And I think that's a really fair and understandable split. The correct answer, and maybe a little bit confusingly, is all of the greenhouse gas emissions from the activities of a person, company or community. So it's actually two hands up. I understand why lots of you have said one hand up because it has carbon in it, carbon footprint. And it would seem to make sense that that means that it's only carbon dioxide that we're thinking about. But that's not actually the case. We're thinking about all of the different greenhouse gases. So that can be methane or nitrous oxide as well, because they can all contribute to climate change. And for the final option, we can actually use our carbon footprints to identify ways and things that we can do to try and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Thank you very much for all of those answers. The final question for me is, which of these energy sources is not renewable? So two hands up if you think it is wind, using wind turbines. One hand up if you think it is the coal power plant and hand on your head if you think it is the solar panels. One of the, the quickest answering for the questions here, I can just see loads of hands shooting up all across Scotland. Yes, you are bang on with one hand up. It is a coal power plant, which is what we used to use several decades ago to make lots of our electricity. And burning coal releases greenhouse gases into our atmosphere. And at some point, the coal will run out. Whereas using wind and using the sun energy does not release greenhouse gases when they generate electricity. And they will be around for much longer after the coal runs out. So those are our renewable energy sources. Thank you very much. OK, well, today we're very excited to be joined by Nicola Marshall um, from Jacobs. And that's not the biscuit company, that is an engineering uh, company. And she's going to talk to us about engineering and building sustainable homes. Uh, and Jacobs is a global engineering company that works to solve some of the world's biggest problems using science, engineering and manufacturing, making stuff. And it's a big thank you to Nicola for joining us today uh, and to our friends at Jacobs for helping make this workshop happen. So that's all for me. I'm going to hand over to Nicola now. I will stay on the screen and be with you throughout this. But Nicola, thank you so much uh, for doing this today. I can't wait to see what you're going to be talking about. And I'll hand over to you now. No problem at all. I'm just going to share my slides so you guys can see what I'm seeing. So ooh, there we go. Hopefully Excellent. you see my screen. Awesome. Yes, yes. So thank you so much for the introduction, Josh, and a big hello to everyone who's joining us today. As Josh was saying, I am Nicola and I'm an environmental consultant at Jacobs. As Josh was saying, we're an engineering company focused on creating a more connected and sustainable world. Our company is made up of all sorts of jobs and people. So we have engineers and architects and designers and project managers, and they work on really big projects and also some very small engineering and construction projects too. We help to design and create buildings, bridges, railway lines, roads, and much, much more across 70 countries worldwide. And one project we've worked on pretty recently, which is close to home if we have any Glasgow schools in the audience, um, was the Govan to Partick Bridge, which opened up in Glasgow only two weeks ago. So making sustainable choices is ingrained into our decision making on all our projects. And I've heard that you guys have been learning about what sustainability looks like in the homes we live in and the ones that we will build for the future too. So throughout my life, I've lived in all shapes and sizes of homes. I've lived in old school tenement buildings that you might find in Glasgow, like you can see on the bottom left. 
I've lived in tall tower block buildings in various different cities across the world. And I've also lived in detached style homes like you can see on the top right too. So my first question to you guys is what kind of homes do you guys live in? And what do you think, what kind of homes do you think you'll live in in the future? Have a think and let your teachers know what type of homes do you guys live in? So we've got some coming in from different classes. We've got uh, so one class mostly detached, semi detached, a story flat, so four stories. Um, we've got detached uh, cottage, caravan, converted stables, terraced houses flats, bungalows, um, some children are saying the top middle image, um, some are saying mostly like picture three, which I think is a detached house, Victorian tenement flat. Um, I think we're kind of covering every single type of housing that I could think of there. Yeah, I think so too, yeah. So why is it I'm asking that? So well, as Josh was saying before, our climate has been changing. Human activity since the Industrial Revolution has led to our planet warming with more greenhouse gases in our atmosphere, and that's causing our climate to change. We see more extreme weather events which can affect our livelihoods, our health, our homes and the environment too. So how can we change our homes to ensure we adapt them to our changing climate? How can we ensure that they're built with as minimal greenhouse gas emissions as possible so we're not adding as many to the atmosphere? as this would stop um, our climate to change? And how can we make them sustainable for now and for the future too? So before we look at what sustainable choices we can make for our homes, let's find out how we can build homes to begin with. So a house is a building where people live in and they can look different depending on where you are in the world and even in Scotland too. But at its core, it's designed to be a home, providing shelter and a place for our daily activities. When we build a home, there are six key technical phases we go through in the engineering world. The first part is we're establishing the foundation of the house. So this is the base which keeps the house stable and safe. It bears the weight of the home and it keeps it protected from the elements. The effects of climate change, such as increased flood risk, need to be considered and is a big factor when we're choosing the type of foundation design. After establishing the foundation base, we go through a process called framing, where we create the house's frame. This is the skeleton of the house and it provides the essential structure to support the walls and the roof, as well as providing the general shape of the home. In Scotland, we're, this is typically made out of wood or from steel. After framing, our next piece is to add on the house's roof and sides. First, we usually add a waterproofing layer on top of the house frame. And after adding this material, we add on the main roofing and siding materials to protect the house. So typical materials for your roof could be tiles made out of wood or slate or stone. And then typical materials you'll find for the side of our homes might be bricks, might be wood, it might be stone, all sorts of different types of materials. So now that we've built essentially the shelter of our home, we now need to add in our utilities. So that's our electrics, any sort of pipe work or plumbing system, as well as any sort of heating system we need to keep our houses warm. After adding in the utilities, we can start to build out the interior work. So we want to make sure our house war stays warm in the winter and is cool in the summer. So we add a layer of insulations to the walls and the roof to retain any heat or coolness within our house. So typically that insulation is made from a fluffy material that you can see on the right hand side and it's inserted between the outside wall and the house's frame. Then to protect that fluffy insulation layer, we add a drywall to it. So this is usually made from a material called plasterboard and that's the wall that you will see inside your, your house and the one that you can paint on and add wallpaper onto. And then the last phase is our finishing touches. So this is where we add stuff um, to use within our home, like the kitchen and the bathroom and all its components within it. 
So those were the basic steps that will have formed the houses and homes you see on screen and the ones that you live in and I live into. So now that we know what the basics of what makes a home, I need your help with the projects that I have. Jacobs has a client and they've asked us to work together to select what the most sustainable home is out of the options I have on screen. And they've given us five options. We're going to use my sustainability checklist, which I use in my work, to find out which of these homes are the most sustainable. So before we begin, does anyone want to have a guess of what they might think is on my checklist? What is it I'm looking for when I'm checking to see if a home is sustainable? That's a great question there from Nicola. What's she looking for to see if a home can be sustainable? So as always, let your teachers know and your teachers can type us in the chat. So one class has already come in uh, with solar panels, question mark. Another one has said about plants, recycling bins, renewable energy sources. Yeah, some really good comments coming in and different ones as well, which is awesome. We've also got insulation. We've got how the frame is made. Uh, one class has said material to construct the house. Um, another one has come in with um, living walls, electricity rather than gas. Um, another class has said a garden to grow your own food. One has said land around it, how it protects itself from the elements, um, making sure water electricity is not leaking. We've got so many coming in, I'm struggling to keep up with yeah. all these brilliant answers. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Awesome. One's come in with, sorry, find a thing, Nicola. One's come in with yeah. um, solar panels, good insulation. They've also mentioned something called a heat pump, which I think uh, you may be talking about a bit later. Yeah. Okay. Really, really interesting. So let's see if any of your ideas are on my checklist. So let's go through it together, guys. Um, so the first aspect I'd like you to consider, which some of you guys have already said, is the main material used to build the outside wall of the home. So on screen, you can see which siding material has been used to construct each home and where that material has come from. So when selecting materials to use, we want materials which have a low carbon footprint, which as Josh was saying, it means we've got low greenhouse gas emissions produced when we were creating the material. That usually means we want the material to have been produced with minimal energy use. And additionally, we want the material to be created and made somewhere local too. So for our example, we want somewhere in Scotland. So out of the options on screen, I've got houses three and four, which are made out of bricks. Bricks are the most energy intensive out of the options I have on screen because they've got to be heated to over a thousand degrees Celsius to make them stable. We also have two different types of stone in options one and five. So stones are a bit less energy intensive um, than bricks. And then our final option is from home number two, which is wood, and that's the least energy intensive out of the options on screen. So I'm gonna ask you guys to give one tick to a home if it uses um, a material with minimal energy use, based on what I've just said, and then another tick if the home uses a material that is local to Scotland. So I'm going to give you guys a minute to have a little think about that and let us know in the, the chat what options, um, which houses you're awarding your ticks to. Yeah, so let us know which numbers you're going to give a tick to based on what Nicola has just said. We've got answers starting to, to come in, Nicola. So five and two is quite a common combination that we're getting. Yeah. We've Amazing. also got um, house four as well. 
Um, one that said two for minimal energy and five for local materials. Mm -hmm. um, but those seem to be the common numbers that we're getting so far. Awesome. Nice. Very, very good, guys. Love to see how much is coming through. So I'll maybe, should I pop through to the next slide or should we give it another? Oh, they're all coming I firing think you in can, now. <laughs> I, would, I would go on to the next slide. Sometimes there's a, a delay. Yeah. yeah, no problem. So I'm going to, these are where I'm going to give my ticks to. Um, so I've given a tick to one, two, four and five because the material that we use was local to Scotland. And I've also given an additional tick to house number two because the material that was used to build it was wood, which is not very, um, has quite a low carbon footprint. So it's important. So you guys are very similar to what I've put kind of, you know, a couple of different options in different houses there. So it's important to note that this exercise is one to apply when we pick any materials for our home. So I know someone said previously about looking at the material used to build the house frame um, so that, you know, you can use this exercise for any sort of material that you're looking at to pick the most sustainable option. So let's look at our next next aspect. Um, and I'd like to focus on is the heating system used to provide the heat in our homes. So on screen, I've summarized what main heating system is used in each home. So we want the heating system within our home to come from a renewable energy source. So by ensuring that it's powered by a renewable energy source, it means we're not burning any fossil fuels, which would produce more greenhouse gas emissions. And additionally, our renewable energy sources are not going to run out and um, they'll be infinite and we'll never kind of run out of them. So let's go through our options together. So houses number one and four use a boiler which produces heat by burning natural gas. Houses number two and five use a heating system called the heat pump, which I know someone's already posted on the chat previously. So heat pumps work by using electricity to take the heat from the outside of the home and they move it inside and it works a bit like a fridge in reverse. The key thing to note is that they're not releasing any greenhouse gas emissions when they operate. And house number three uses gets its heat from something called a district heating scheme. So this is where we take waste heat from an industrial process and move it to heat homes. So for example, the waste heat from a whiskey distillery in the northeast of Scotland, I think it's called Pulteney, um, used excess heat that they generated when they were creating whiskey to heat homes in their local community. So based on our criteria of giving a tick to a home that has a heating system um, that's renewable and has a low carbon footprint, which home would you guys give a tick to? So again, if you put your answers in the chat, which home you think meets this criteria. Answers coming in very quickly. This time we've got some very awake and switched on yeah. <laughs> people is joining us today it's lovely to see so it's all a combination of uh, two and five getting a lot of two and five and then we're also getting three uh, included there as one but there's a there's a noticeable um, absence of one and four so it's yeah. everything is two three and five basically yeah perfect cool well, I'm going to head on to my next screen and see what ones I've given my tick to. So I've given my ticks to options two, three and five, which matches quite a few, um, what a few people have said in the chat, which is great to see. So about 81 percent of homes in Scotland have a gas boiler as their main way to heat their home. And it's worth noting I'm part of that 81 percent. I have a gas boiler within my house. Um, so a sustainable choice when building homes would be to make sure that the heating system uses a renewable source like a heat pump or a district heating scheme. So district heating schemes are very beneficial in communities that are nearby industrial sites like um, the whiskey distillery um, in Home um, 3. Um, additionally, the Scottish Government have a support scheme where they can provide some money to households who wish to install a heat pump as a way to encourage them to switch from using gas boilers too. 
So making sure we make sustainable choices with our heating scheme, sorry, our heating system is also linked to the next and final part of my sustainability checklist of this lesson. So the last aspect we're going to look at is the insulation of each home. So if we remind ourselves on what insulation is, it was that fluffy material between the house's frame sandwiched between the outer and the inner wall. And adding that material helps our homes to stay warm in the winter and cool in the summer as heat is not able to flow to the outside. So on screen, I've added in the type and amount of insulation material used for each home. So the first criteria that we want to give a tick to every home to, which meets, is if there's high levels of that insulation material present. Having high amounts of insulation means our homes stay, uh, stay warmer for longer, which means we're relying less on our heating system, which is very much linked to the previous aspect that we covered, um, especially if the heating system is using something like natural gas. So additionally, some materials previously used throughout history have now been found to be dangerous to human health. So let's look through our options. So house number one contains a material called asbestos as its common insulation material. And that was a really common thing to use in the 20th century. However, if asbestos is disturbed, the fibers that it produces can be incredibly harmful to our health when we breathe them in. Additionally, there are a lot of gaps in this example, a lot of gaps in the insulation la layer, which creates pockets where heat can escape from. And we've got house number two, which contains wood fibre insulation as its insulation material. It's a lot safer than asbestos, and for this home, we've got a good even layer of it too. House number three has high amounts of a material called fibreglass, and although it's high amounts creates a good insulation layer to keep us warm, fiberglass also poses some risks to human health. Specifically, if we touch it, it can irritate our skin. House number four uses a material called cellulose, which is often made from recycled paper, which is pretty cool. And similar to house number one, though, there are some gaps in the insulation layer. And finally, house number five has no insulation material between the outer and inner wall. So again, I'm going to give pause for a little for a minute for you guys to have a think about where you would award your ticks to. So you'd award a tick if there's high amounts of the insulation material and also a tick if the material used was not toxic to our health. We've already got some answers coming in oh, yeah. even quicker. <laughs> this is a slightly um, to me, this feels slightly more tricky. There's quite a lot of them have some pros and also some cons. So it'll be interesting yes. to see mm -hmm. what people are saying. So we're looking like we've got a, a clear front runner here, which is uh, number two. Number two is doing very well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But we've also got, I think, a tick for three and for four. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so four and three also seem to be doing well. But again, like before, um, there are two which are absent, and that is number one and number five mm -hmm. don't look like they're getting any ticks. That's amazing. Thank you guys so much. So I'm going to move on to the next slide so you guys can see where I have given a tick to and we can see whether um, we're matched. So that's where I'm giving my ticks to. So like you guys, I think number two is great. It's got high amounts of insulation and the material wood fibre um, is very safe to use. But I'm also giving a tick um, to houses number three and four. So number three was because we did have a high amount of the insulation material which keeps us warm. And then with option number four, although the, there are some gaps with the insulation material, it's good when it's used um, like cellulose, which has come from recycled paper and is very, um, it's not very harmful to, you know, our human health. So that's great. So the practice of adding insulation material between the outer and the inner wall, it only actually really began last century. So in the 1900s, so there's been a big push in recent years to go back to kind of our older building stock and make sure that they're um, adding insulation. So insulation as part of our building codes and standards for our future homes are going to be a big part of Scotland's climate change policy going forward. 
So I'm going to give you guys a minute to, you can either add up how many ticks you've rewarded or you can just even write on the chat which house or which home, sorry, you think was the most sustainable. So based on kind of what the exercises that we've done, the three aspects that we looked at today, which option do you think is the most sustainable? We've already got answers <laughs> coming in. I don't know if you can see it, Nicola, but there's yeah. quite clearly one house or one home, I should say, has mm -hmm. done uh, done the best out of these five. And then someone said two and four is a mix, which is very interesting. Oh, primary seven air asking how much house two might cost. That's a really good question. Um, to kind of consider when we're you know building home for the futures is that kind of trade-off of you know these things are great you know sustainable for now but is there a big cost associated with them but I guess I would kind of argue that there's some costs that are hidden almost like you know greenhouse gas emissions although there's not a monetary cost they're not costing monies pounds there are kind of negative impacts that happen because of climate change and for more greenhouse gas emissions that would mean there's a cost for future generations to kind of bear. There's another question that's also come in, uh, Nicola, um, that has said, our class was wondering, can wood insulation rot? But it's also a potential question for, for any types of insulation. Yeah. Um, I don't know if, uh, I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you have any insight on, on that. I don't actually. I would assume that um, the insulation usually is kind of treated by something a protective coat is usually sometimes added to these insulation materials to make sure that they don't rot. Um, but I would maybe have to come back to you guys on that one and do a little bit of research and find out for you. Thank you. No worries. Cool. So I'm going to go to the next slide and that is where I've awarded my texture. So very interesting. Yeah, I also chose house number two as well as the most sustainable option. But the reason why I wanted to do this exercise where I was giving ticks was to show that there are sustainable choices that were made for the other homes too. Although two has the most amount of ticks, um, there are some other aspects for the other homes which were, you know, um, a great sustainable choice too. So it's good to see that we matched. Um, was there anything at all that anyone found surprising throughout that kind of exercise that we've done together? Yeah, I mean, it certainly for me, it gave me a whole new way of looking at how homes are built. It's not any, I hadn't really considered any of those things before when thinking about um, bringing sustainability into our homes. Mm. Um, there will be an option, uh, we might have a bit of an opportunity for a few more questions um, for Nicola a bit later, yeah. but we've got some answers coming in. So um, one uh, one class said, that uh, they were surprised that the wooden house um, performed better than the brick house. Um, another class said children not very aware that uh, about the different ways of heating our homes, so learning some new facts. Uh, uh, one class wasn't aware of district heating and I certainly wasn't aware of it until uh, we'd spoken about it. Mm -hmm. um, Nicola mm -hmm. um, and quite a lot of new learning around um, the impact of using wood uh, and um, the impacts of that. We've got uh, another question that's come in, um, which is we have a question on the impact of on Scottish woods yeah. if we're using them more for building. Again, um, as we as I said with, with Cindy Ford, uh, we can put all of your questions uh, to Nicola and she can have a think about them and, and get back to you uh, for Friday's assembly if she can't answer any of them at the moment. But um, is that a, a question that you can answer, Nicola? The impact yeah. on Scottish woods if we're using uh -huh. more wood to build? Yeah. Them? It's a really great question to ask. I'll maybe do a little bit of more research to you, but my first kind of answer um, or thought about that is that, yeah, we'd have to kind of make sure we'd manage our natural resources, so our wood or forests in Scotland to make sure that, you know, we're not building and utilising so much of the woods that 
you know they're depleting I mean obviously the great thing about forests is that they can grow back so it takes really good management to make sure that we've got you know we balance the kind of supply and demand um, of houses oh, sorry not houses um, of our forests Thank you. Yeah. So the, the management of it is is really is really critical there. Yeah. Um, thank you for, for answering that question. No worries. Um, I'll maybe just pop on to my next slide. So I've only got two more to go through. So um, like you guys kind of had answered, um, option number two was kind of the winner of the most sustainable home um, that we kind of talked about. And I chose this house deliberately, this home deliberately. Um, I'm not sure if some of you guys recognised it. This home is designed as part of COP26 in Glasgow. So it's called the COP26 house and it was a zero carbon timber frame house built by Beyond Zero Homes to show what a sustainable home in Scotland could um, look like. So do let us know in the chat um, if you're if you were able to visit it, because I know a lot of Scot schools got a chance to visit it in Glasgow. Um, but again, the reason why I kind of picked some of the other homes there is because I think to me, they represented just different types of homes we see throughout Scotland and they were from different parts of history too. So there were sustainable choices that we could have made throughout you know, all phases of the house's lifetime, but the most impactful kind of choices we can make are during the design and build phase. But there are still things that we can do once we're living in the house. We only saw a small portion of my sustainability checklist that I use on my job. A lot of the things that you guys were kind of saying that you thought would be on my checklist previously are definitely things I also consider. But just because we only had um, a quick little lesson today, I only had to kind of focus on a couple of the key points. Um, but I hope you had a good taster nonetheless. So you know, even though we kind of picked kind of a winner here, I hope you can kind of see that we can make sustainable choices through our, all our homes. And therefore, these homes are going to come in all different shapes and sizes. But the kind of key thing is the fact that we're making sustainable choices and always thinking about what is it that we can do when we're kind of changing our homes or building new homes, um, what sustainable choices are. Um, so it's really important that, you know, we're not just designing homes for just now for our current needs, but also for our future generations too. So with that, you know, I'd like to thank you for your time, for participating, um, and I hope you've learned a little bit more about what a sustainable home can look like and what choices we can make to achieve um, a sustainable home. So I'll pass back um, to Josh, but thank you very much, guys. Thank you so much, Nicola, um, for that. It was really, really fascinating. Um, we, we've got just um, two minutes left before I really need to kick off with my slide. So if you do have any uh, questions for Nicola, then please do post them in the chat. Um, as I said, if we can't answer them today, then we can um, uh, have a look at getting them answered for Friday. Um, Whilst we're waiting for that, Nicola, I've, I've just got one question of my um, um from myself. Um, mm -hmm. sorry for keeping uh, putting you on the spot today. No, it's okay. Um, I wanted to know if there were any kind of tips or tr tricks for thinking about um bringing sustainability into the home. So we were talking about building the home and um from the from the conception to actually making it, but if uh, for those of us who are inside our homes already and our homes are already made mm -hmm. um are there any sustainable kind of things that we can think about um for the homes that we are already in yeah so i think one thing that i didn't get to cover today which what i love i would have loved to have talked about because i'm really passionate about it is the kind of amount of waste that we create you know in our lives um so we all like to kind of buy different things we need things you know food electronics, equipment, all that kind of stuff within our day to day lives. Um, but what's a really important thing for me is, you know, what we're doing with our waste. So making sure that we're using, you know, the different recycling facilities we have available to us. So for each council in Scotland, they'll have recycling centres that you can go and bring a lot of waste to. So a lot of electronic equipment, you know, we're not just putting it in our general bin. We're kind of taking them to a special site so that they can be recycled and repurposed. And the other thing that's kind of really important is just about trying to stop waste reduction. So just trying to kind of make choices where, you know, do I actually, is there a, a way for me to actually reduce the amount of waste I'm producing in the first place? So a good example of that um, is, you know, with plastic water bottles, you know, a, a good way to reduce the 
kind of plastic water bottles from drinking water is you know getting a reusable water bottle like one I have right here so you're not having to constantly buy plastic bottles you know finish them and then chuck the plastic bottles away making a choice like this means you're kind of uh, reducing how much waste um, you've got from those plastic water bottles and I think you can kind of apply that exercise in your mind to a lot of different other things too. Thank you so much. Um, I've, there's a few questions that have come in. Um, we've only, unfortunately, we've only got time, I think, for me to ask one quickly. Uh, but like I said, hopefully Nicola will happily mm -hmm. answer some of them for our assembly on Friday. But uh, one that I've, I've just seen is, how long have you done your role uh, that you're in and what do you enjoy about it? That's a great question. So I've been in J I've been with Jacobs for three years now. Um, so I came out of university. I worked in a bagel shop for a little bit and then I went to Jacobs to kind of do um, this environmental consultant role. And I think my favorite thing apart about it is like it feels amazing to kind of work on different projects that have such a lasting impact on our future. For example, I talked about that Govan to Partick Bridge that was recently built in Glasgow. I, I get a great sense of pride when I walk past it, knowing that the company I work for, you know, has made such a lasting, impactful thing for the kind of communities of Partick and Govan. And I think that kind of extends to all the other infrastructure and engineering projects that we've done um, throughout the UK, but also throughout the world as well. So that's my favourite thing about my job is, is seeing the wonderful things that we create and that people use day to day. And we were part of uh, making it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, if you have asked a question, which I can see quite a few of you have, uh, don't worry, just remember that uh, and we'll do our best to get that answered for uh, Friday. Um, I'm just going to share my slides now just for the the closing of today's session. So a big thank you, Nicola, for that wonderful session. It, it was so informative um, for me and I'm sure all of our uh, learners uh, found it really informative as well. Um, so we hope, we hope that that lesson helped you understand a bit more about engineering and building sustainable homes. Uh, your next challenge is to complete our insulation experiment. And just like yesterday, this resource can be found on our Climate Action Week webpage. And you can use the results to continue designing your sustainable home. So again, just a reminder um, that this week uh, you get to design your sustainable home. And remember to send your designs to us to enter our competition to win books for your school. The deadline for the competition entries is Friday the 4th of October, but any design sent in by 3 p.m. Uh, this Thursday will be included in our assembly on Friday and we would love to see as many of your designs as possible. As I've been saying, if you have any questions for Nicola, we've already got some uh, that I can see in the chat. Uh, but if you have any further ones that you think of after this session, then you can email them to education at keepscotlandbeautiful.org and we'll do our best um, to see if they can be answered. We would love to see any photos um, that you take of your insulation experiments and please share anything you are doing for Climate Action Week on social media and we will share your posts from public accounts at our assembly. Um, as I said yesterday, we uh, also very much value your feedback on our live lessons. So please complete uh, this short feedback form if you have time, uh, the space for pupils and for teachers. and. The final thing for me is a big thank you. Uh, thank you, Nicola, for that wonderful presentation. Thank you, teachers, for supporting your students. And thank you to all of the pupils and learners who've given us some brilliant answers today. Um, we hope you've enjoyed it and we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow for our lesson on designing sustainable homes, including how our homes can support our well-being. I would